When you look up into the sky, what do you feel? Happiness, amazement, loneliness, or maybe some combination of all three of these emotions. Each and every one of those stars are millions if not billions of light years away. And each and every one of them make up what we call our universe. In my previous documentary, I proposed four questions. How big is the universe really? If the universe is expanding, what is it expanding into? Is infinity really the only way we can count just how many stars, planets, and other things there are out there? And if the universe is infinite, will the universe ever end? Each one of them questions the universe in a unique way. In this documentary, I will try to answer these questions. The reason I say try is because we really don't know the true answer to each of these questions. Actually, this video is closer to a theoretical thought exercise than to truth. But that doesn't mean everything I say will be wrong. Our understanding of the universe is only as strong as our understanding of physics. However, if our understanding of physics is even slightly wrong, that could change our entire outlook on the universe. It's a razor thin line we need to walk. So today, we will walk across this line and hopefully understand the universe just a little bit better when we reach the other side. The most important thing that holds the universe together is gravity. Or is it? In 1666, Isaac Newton discovered the concept of gravity, but all he really did was name a naturally occurring phenomenon where smaller objects were pulled towards bigger ones. Gravity is one of the first concepts humanity mastered. Even when people could have still been considered a monkey, we threw rocks instead of traps with falling rocks to capture our prey. And for thousands of years after that, we used gravity to our advantage. However, there could be one problem with the theory of gravity. Is gravity real? There are other theories as to why planets come together and why smaller objects rotate around larger ones. Obviously, we have the Newtonian theory, which we learned in school. Then we have Einstein's general relativity for those of you who enjoy space and physics. Then we have the Tensor theory, the Will Nordfit theory, and the Rastolf theory. These are all considered practical. If we add in theories that aren't considered practical or have been disproven, we could have 12 different theories all about gravity. There are also theories and people who don't believe that gravity even exists. However, if we went to those theories, I would have to grab my tinfoil hat. So we'll be sticking with theories that believe that some form of gravity is real. Actually, we'll just be talking about the two most popular theories on gravity because not only do they have the least amount of flaws, they are actually both considered correct when they describe what gravity is, even though they kind of describe it differently. To start us off, we have the main theory of gravity that we all learned in school, the Newtonian theory. Newton's law of universal gravitation is usually said to be, every particle attracts every other particle in the universe with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Whew. That was a lot of big words, but what that sentence simplifies down to is this formula. F is the gravitational force between two objects. G is the gravitational constant of wherever you're measuring. The two M's are the masses of the two objects, and the R is the distance between those objects. The Newtonian theory is actually a really sound theory. I guess that's why we all learned about it in school. But there is one thing that they don't teach you about this theory. For the majority of people, the Newtonian theory is all they'll need to know for their entire lives. However, if we need to measure something with a lot of accuracy, or deals with something that has a lot of gravity, or even deal with really small distances, we use Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Einstein's theory of general relativity doesn't disprove Newton's law of universal gravitation. If anything, Einstein does a fantastic job of refining Newton's most famous law. In a sense, Einstein's theory of gravity gives a more complete and more exact definition of gravity than Newton's law. Einstein introduced the concept of space-time, which is a four-dimensional plane that curves as objects with mass move throughout space. The specific curvature of space-time is directly related to the energy and momentum of the object and whatever amount of matter and radiation are present. In general, Newton's theory helped us understand what gravity is in a simple form, but Einstein's theory adds more specific details into the equations such as gravitational time dilation, black holes, and the geometry of space. The actual list of what's included in Einstein's calculations are way more complex. It even includes quantum mechanics at some point. Einstein's theories have also helped us understand more about the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background, and the sheer scale of the universe. 
Thanks to Einstein's theories and the Bayesian model averaging, we have a guess to the size of the universe. 7 trillion light years in diameter. That isn't the scale of the observable universe, or the part of the universe that we can see, which we know is around 93 billion light years in diameter. But the 7 trillion light years is our best guess to the true size of the universe by using math. Is the universe really that big? We'll never know. That's simply because of the rapid expansion that the universe is currently in thanks to a weird and hypothetical form of matter called dark matter. Dark matter and dark energy are entirely hypothetical forms of matter and energy. Neither have been directly seen and we really don't have any theories as to what they specifically are. With that said, dark matter is thought to make up around 85% of the matter in the entire universe. Actually, dark matter and dark energy make up about 95% of the entire matter and energy in the universe. The remaining 5% is all the matter we know of. The only reason dark matter is thought to exist and why scientists defend it so fervently is because without that much dark matter in the universe, the accepted theories of gravity wouldn't be able to exist. There would simply be too little matter throughout the entire universe to let our understanding of gravity and physics exist. That is really the only evidence we have. The galaxy wouldn't have formed like they did or moved like they do without there being more matter. This theory of dark matter and dark energy is also part of the reason we believe the universe is still expanding. Actually, not only do we believe that the universe is still expanding because of dark matter and dark energy, it's actually expanding more quickly now than it was 14 billion years ago after the Big Bang. We simply do not know why this is happening. It's insane to think about how a universe that is potentially 7 trillion light years in diameter is not only still expanding, but it's actually expanding at a quicker pace than it did billions of years ago. This brings up a really important question. What is the universe expanding into? The theories we have to answer this are incredibly complex and are all hypothetical. We have absolutely no evidence to show us what's on the other side of the universe. There is also the case of religion. I can't properly speak about religion and its effect on science. The reason is is because I'm not religious myself. So with that said, there are two main or most popular theories. The first is the universe is expanding into nothing, or that there's nothing to expand into. To regular people, this doesn't make sense. This would treat the universe as its own thing entirely and simply say that there's nothing to expand to because the universe is everything. So maybe it's better said that the universe isn't expanding into nothing, but it's creating the universe from nothing. It's a pretty confusing theory, but it's still not as confusing as number two. The multi-universe theory has been around for a long, long time. It has its roots in ancient Greek culture where the idea of the infinite worlds existed. The theory then began to gain steam in 1952 when Aaron Scrooinger gave a lecture in which he gave a warning to the people in the audience that it may seem lunic. Side note, when the person explaining a theory says that he may seem crazy before he starts speaking, you know it's going to be a wild ride. Anyway, the multi-universe theory is just a confusing mess of knowledge. If I had to explain it in a simple enough way, I'd probably say that something like this. There are an infinite numbers in universes outside of our universe, like bubbles floating in nothingness? Since there are infinite numbers of universes, then anything is possible. For example, if I chose not to eat a slice of cake, then there would be a universe where I chose to eat that cake. It would be the exact same me with the exact same experiences in the exact same world, but the only difference is I ate that cake. This makes sense, but the scale is incomprehensible when you talk about the entire universe. So if I wanted to really answer the question of what the universe is expanding into, I'd have to say that nobody knows, however I personally believe that the universe is expanding into nothingness or that the universe is creating something from nothing out there on the edge. I don't have any evidence for this theory, but I believe that's most plausible because the other theories are just so far-fetched. The universe is a crazy and wonderful place. I love to go outside and look at the stars. However, there is one thing I like to do more than look at the stars. I love to peel back that beauty and just try to understand how our universe works. I'm a big believer that math and science control the way our universe works. With the right numbers and the right equations, anything can be solved, or at least that's what I believe. This begins our next conundrum. How numbers can get so big? For example, the Milky Way has a diameter of 105,700 light years. If we multiply the diameter by pi, we get a circumference of 331,898 light years. 
but there's only one problem with this answer. It measures the 2D circumference of the Milky Way. However, the Milky Way isn't a 2D object. We live in a 3D world, so we need 3D measurements. First, we're going to need the volume of the Milky Way. The volume of the Milky Way is an astonishing 8 trillion cubit light years, theoretically. This measurement only took estimated measurements of the size of the Milky Way and did the math. It doesn't calculate the amount of empty space between each planet and star. So a better way to measure the size of the Milky Way would be through either density or mass. Measuring the density would be a straightforward way to tell us how spread out everything is, and measuring the mass would be a great way to tell us how much of everything there is. The density of the Milky Way is about 1 kilogram of matter for every 5 billion cubic kilometers. So in freedom units, that would be around 2 pounds for every 1.2 billion cubic miles. The mass of the Milky Way is an even more extreme example. The mass of our entire Milky Way is 1.5 trillion solar masses, or 1.5 times our own sun. Or it'll also be 17 billion Earths, or about this many iPhone 13s. The density and mass of the Milky Way can be defined in an infinite number of ways. Anything can be used as a measurement, that's why our society came up with unified ways of measuring things. However, when we need to measure things in space, we tend to use a different scale of measurement. We use light years for distance and solar masses for weight, for example. If we don't use the proper measurement, it can seem like we're looking at a number that would be close to infinity. And this brings us to our third question. Is infinity really the only way we can comprehend how many stars, planets, and just things there are out there in our universe? In my previous video, I said that some of the higher estimates put the number of planets in the universe at 21.6 sextillion. Obviously, we'll probably never know an actual answer, but the estimates are very wide-ranging. However, 21.6 sextillion is a number so massive, I really don't think I can give a good example of how big that number is. But, I'll try. If you had to walk the distance between the Earth and our Sun 21.6 sextillion times, you would end up walking this many times. If you wanted to know how much time that would take, it would take somewhere in the range of this many centuries. The numbers in our universe are so massive that sometimes I just say infinity because it wouldn't really matter. Well, every number does matter. It depends on the context. Because our universe is so big, we can't get an exact number on every star and planet. The majority of people on Earth don't even know how many planets are in our own solar system. However, as these numbers get more and more massive, I honestly don't know how to put into words just how big they are. Infinity is just that. Infinity. You can't actually reach infinity because you'll just end up counting for forever. There will always be a big number to get to. Also, you would run out of time. If you were going to try to count to 1 trillion by hand, it would take you just over 31,000 years to complete. No sleep, no food, no water, just counting. So unless there's a need to use a specific number, using infinity for any number over 1 trillion wouldn't be unrealistic. I want to add here that this also puts into perspective just how much Apple is worth. There is also another problem for trying to find a specific number for how many different objects there are in our universe. The universe may just go on for forever. We really don't know what the universe is, or how big it is, or how much it's expanding, so to try to put a tangible number on something that may not even follow the laws of physics is kind of impossible, don't you think? This is why most people talk about the universe as the observable universe, because we can't count what we can't see, and honestly we can't even really count what we can see. So the answer to our third question is an unsurprising yes. We don't know the true size of the universe, so it just may go on for forever. And honestly, with how big numbers can get, it wouldn't matter just to use infinity. All this talk about the universe going on for forever brings me to our last topic. Will the universe end? Most scientists believe that the universe began at the Big Bang, but not many scientists have theories as to what will happen in the end. I guess the first question we should try to answer is, will there be an end? I just finished talking about how the universe was probably infinite in size. This is more likely true, so there's really no doubt here that the universe itself will probably just go on for forever. However, there is one last problem. The energy within the universe is slowly disappearing. This means that the universe is slowly dying. Probably. There's evidence that it is and evidence that it's not. If enough energy was being created to offset the amount that's being depleted by heat loss or Hawking radiation, then the universe would probably live on for forever. However, the current data we have shows that the universe is slowly working into the negatives. This means that more energy is being spent than what's being created. 
No one knows how to create matter and energy. There's also the problem of the conservation of energy. This is where it states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. I actually don't know much about the creation of matter and energy, so I'll stop talking about this here, but it may become its own topic in the future. So since we're losing energy, this means that the universe will eventually die. The universe will probably still physically exist, but there will be no matter or energy. This process will literally take hundreds of trillions of years to complete, so there's nothing really for us to currently worry about. But the answer to this last question is, if the universe continues at the same pace it is now, it will take a couple hundred trillion years to die, but it will die. So that's the end. It's sort of a depressing end, or maybe not. Me and you will never live to see the day to see the end of the universe, so there's not much need to think about any more than what I have now. I really enjoyed making this video and the last video as well. This might be the most fun I've had explaining the different space topics that I just love so much. I truly do not know what my next documentary will be about, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.